I was see, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying not to start off by saying so, yeah. and I almost said it. It's a good lead in. I know it's hard to yeah hard to break that habit. It's the I'm about to talk now. Right. But somebody uh, who I know who's here in Portland posted something about dealing with, like when you're presenting research, whether you're showing videos or audio or just talking about what people did, how do you deal with team members if you're internal or, or I guess client representatives if you're a consultant? How do you deal with them being derisive toward the participants? Hmm. Um, I had that issue. Interesting. Yeah. And, and I've, and I've had that issue a couple of times, but like one of the things that she notes is they were in disbelief about things that they, the participants said and did, which was illustrated by shocked facial expressions, laughs, jokes, and questioning the participants honesty. And I'll say that, you know, I've had times too, where I've seen a, a participant do something and go where I, sort of can't help myself raising my eyebrows mm -hmm. um, because it was, it was a very surprising moment. Yeah. So I was wondering if I read that and I thought, you know, if you'd ever had issues with presenting research where the people you're presenting to either acted derisively toward the results or toward the participants ever, if you've ever taken a clients out with you. Not derisive. I mean, we've, I, I mean, maybe derisive not is, too strong a word, but I mean, I've I've done interviews where the participant was um, perhaps kind of awkward or maybe even inappropriate. We, where the know, where the participant is? Yes. Oh, okay. Where and then jokes perhaps are made after the session, like, "Wow, can you believe they said X Y Z?" Okay. But when yeah, when the participant was actually being rude or something like that, right? Or okay. said something let's say inappropriate, right? Um, or questionable or mm -hmm. made somebody uncomfortable, <laughs> put it that way. Um, where once we leave the, the participants, this is um, the one I'm thinking of is like an office, like a, a business person. Mm -hmm. And once we leave, we're in the car driving away, then it's like, wow, can you believe they said X, Y, Z? That was pretty surprising. Right. Um, not so much in a demeaning way, I'd like to think, but more just in a, I don't know the right. right, like it, like it stood out enough that the team needed to talk about it to some extent, kind right. of. Thing. Yeah, not like that guy's a big jerk, and we we we're not going to use his data or you know whatever. It was just like, wow, that was kind of awkward. I will say it's 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 funny you mention this because I had a conversation with, I say a colleague, but a, a networking person, someone mm -hmm. in our field, <laughs> maybe a month or so ago, where I don't even know how we got on the subject, but they were telling me the story of exactly what you're talking about, where they were doing an in-lab test, usability test. Mm -hmm. um, they happen to not be facilitating at the mo at this time, someone else was, but the mm -hmm. client was so irate with what the participant was doing, they actually barged yep. into the room and was like talking to them, like, how can you not, I forget the exact services, but how can you not understand how this works? Or yeah. yeah. And they said it was like the most humiliating ever aspect of user research they've ever experienced. Like they're just humiliated um, that that happened. Yeah. But that's never happened to me personally. Yeah. So I thought of, I thought of three examples. One was sort of a, like in, in order of magnitude kind of thing. Uh, the first one I thought of was we had a participant say, someday I hope to make it to all 52 states. And I definitely remember my eyebrows going way up on that. She wasn't looking at me at the time, but I had that moment of how many? And, you know, and we talked about it afterwards because I had some of the, the client people there with me mm -hmm. and we were kind of chuckling about like, yeah, 52. Uh, but my comment was, it definitely is an odd statement, but it's not really relevant to, and ever, and, then it is just let go, you know, yeah. not a big deal. Odd little moment, but not relevant. And then I've had 
in in showing some video clips of people trying to use the concept prototype that had been put together, uh, one of the people in the client room or on the client side in the room said, you know, what an effing idiot. And I said to them, that person pays your salary. Mm -hmm. And it shut him up in the moment, but it made problems later. Oh, is that right? Because he was internal, so he can make little waves when I'm not there. And it made th other things problematic in the project later, because basically I embarrassed him in front of it, the group. Right. And then the other one was having someone on site at a client's house where they got kind of mad at what the client was saying about the product. Mm. And I had to ask them out and say, leave and don't come back. So I basically fired them from the project or at least that part of the project. Mm -hmm. So it just, it really got me thinking about like at the, at the beginning of my career, I don't think I, like all, everything I just explained to you is like the past 10 years happened. The previous 10 years, I don't really, I have a little super, I would say super fuzzy memory, except for one moment where there's a developer pounding on the the, the one-way window. It's not a two-way mirror. It's a one-way window. Anyway, pounding on the window, yelling at the participant, saying, "It's the green button. It's the green button." I remember that clearly. But for the but I didn't say anything. Right. And I realized the longer I go in this career, the less patience I have for that crap. I'm totally fine with those moments of 52 states, where right. it's like. That was odd, but to be like mean to the participants, it's like, no. Cause like, I feel like part of my job is to protect them, mm -hmm. which is why in reports, you know, we don't use their names. Right. Use participant one, participant two, the, especially with the client, they don't get the email addresses or contact information of the participants. I've had that asked for and I'm like, no, <laughs> yep. I don't know. It, it It's a weird, it, I know that it is not a normal thing, mm -hmm. but I think especially for, for people who are doing the kind of work that we do, knowing that it happens and deciding what you're going to do about it, generally speaking, because you never know exactly how it's going to manifest itself. But deciding what you're going to do about it before it happens, I think, is is something to think about. Yeah, yeah. I think being mentally prepared for those types of situations, mm -hmm. it's not something you normally think about because you just don't expect it. Like even myself, I can't. Like you might ask me, I can't point, put my finger on a, any situation that was that bad, like you right. described. And it would probably catch me off guard, to be honest. Like I would have to think, like, and to your point, like assess the situation. Like, how do I want to handle this? Like. Yeah. I want to call this guy out in a meeting or do I want to pull him aside privately afterwards and say, you know, that's not appropriate. We want to be more supportive and understanding. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I noted in my response to the person who acted me is the, the biggest thing that I feel I've learned <clears throat> in my career is if you really want to change people, you can't do it in a group setting. Yep. You have to do it one-on-one. -on -one. That's absolutely true. Uh, and it's takes more work. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, you know, you can't use the, the emotion of the moment to be like zing. Right. Yeah. It's going to be jerk reaction to just. Right. Shut them up. Yeah. I know there are classes available. Like I remember taking a class when I started my first job in difficult conversations. Mm. I don't know if it's a, if it's a, that kind of training or if it's, you know, just falls under planning for research, you know, because we, we often will plan what to do if things go wrong in the field, mm -hmm. or at least maybe not to the exact minute detail, but certainly a, a general understanding of, hey, we don't feel comfortable in this setting. Let's wrap up and leave. And yeah. we all know beforehand that that's what we're going to do. Because I feel like I know what I've done in the past, especially with like a new client, is I have a sheet of like do's and don'ts for mm -hmm. observation. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and I could see it tying into that. Like here's, you know, the general ask how to ask questions and who's leading and stuff like that. And there can also be, I don't have it in there now, but I could see adding something like, and here's, you know, expected behaviors or attitudes towards the customer or to the participants. Like, right. We don't belittle them. We don't, um, like you said, if it's an uncomfortable situation, we follow as the lead, you follow my lead to end early. Yeah, I I have I have an observer etiquette document, right? That I've, which everyone had. should have. If you're leading everyone. research with clients, then mm -hmm. you need to have that. Yeah, but now I'm thinking based off of Amy, her question on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. and our conversation about adding. It's not just observer tips when you're in the field or in the lab or whatever when you're viewing it live, but it's also treating the results of the research with respect as well. Yeah, um, I think that's a good idea. I think I'm gonna do that too. All right. All right. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll joint publish something and it'll yes. be a white paper and people will download it and it'll change the world. Because uh, that's what, what, that's what white papers do. Well, I don't know, not, Times New Roman? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and I'm thinking of like, like three spelling mistakes. <laughs> Anything so but people can find them and feel like they're helping, they're, they're <laughs> contributing. Right. That is often when I'm doing um, report walkthroughs. I, I used to do this internally, is I would leave purposely one or two mistakes in there yeah. so that people could say, oh, hey, that spelled wrong. And I'd be like, oh, thank you for pointing that out. They feel like they said something, so they don't have to come up with something to say. Interesting you know? psychology. <laughs> okay. Because I, I feel like, you know, if you don't give people something to contribute in those meetings, sometimes they're just going to find some thread and just start pulling at it so they can be seen as, you know, contributing and smart and when they should just sit back and... Mm -hmm.